Christ our Savior told us that we ought always to pray and not lose heart. St. Paul repeats this instruction, telling us to pray always and to give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. The Catechism is realistic about this command, telling us that we cannot pray at all times if we do not pray at specific times, consciously willing it. These are the special times of Christian prayer in both intensity and duration. That is why the Church has set apart this day as the Feast of Corpus Christi, to recognize and adore publicly, even outside the four walls of the Church building, the true presence of Christ's body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Blessed Sacrament. Now there are those who see little value in outward forms of prayer and public symbolic actions such as processions. Such critics quote Jesus' words, When you pray, go into your room and shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. The critics remind us of our Savior's warning that if we perform our religious duties primarily to be seen by men, we will have no reward from our Father who is in heaven. Our Savior also taught that the kingdom of God is within us. Some then ask, What need is there for the external forms of ritual and sacrament and priesthood and processions with the blessed sacrament if one can find God present within oneself? However, these critics are drawing a false conclusion. Although the sacred liturgy and set forms of prayer are not ends in themselves, we are not free to neglect or minimize them as means to the love and service of God, for we are social and embodied beings. Jesus' own example of worshiping in the temple and the synagogue tells us that he gave no one license to neglect traditional forms of prayer and public worship. When our Lord instituted the Eucharist at the Last Supper, he used visible signs and ritual actions. After the resurrection, the earliest Christians devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they partook of food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. That tells us that we are called to pray and to serve God both personally and communally. Jesus' words about the kingdom being within us can also be translated as the kingdom of God is in the midst of us. Both are true. Christ dwells within us individually, but also dwells among us as his holy people, redeemed by his precious blood. We are Christ's mystical body, and the Eucharistic sacrifice is at the very center of our identity in Christ, the personal and the social, the internal and the external dimensions, are intertwined because of the way God created and redeemed our human nature. The same Lord who warned us against self-serving displays of religiosity also told us, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Jesus also said that we must not be ashamed of bearing witness to him. Everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I also will deny before my Father who is in heaven. The externals of prayer and liturgy and popular devotion do matter if we wish to serve God on His terms and in a way that befits our own humanity. In our time, when so many are forgetful of God, we need, more than ever, this act of public testimony of faith in our Eucharistic King who dwells among us. Let the prayer taught by the angel to the shepherd children at Fatima in 1916 express our desire to make reparation for the unbelief and indifference of so many. My God, I believe, I adore, 
I hope and I love thee. I beg pardon for those who do not believe, do not adore, do not hope, and do not love thee. Christ's words concerning the Eucharist are recorded in the sixth chapter of St. John's Gospel. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any one eats of this bread, he will live for ever. And the bread which I shall give for the life of the world is my flesh. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who eats me will live because of me. The Catholic Church has always taken Jesus at his word. In the Blessed Sacrament, the whole Christ is truly, really, and substantially contained. That means that his body, blood, soul, and divinity are present. The change of the substance of the bread and wine into the substance of Christ's body and blood is called transubstantiation. For that reason, the Blessed Sacrament is worshipped with the worship due to God alone, latria, since the sacrament is Jesus Christ himself. That is why St. Paul warns the Corinthians about the dangers of unworthy communion and of not discerning the Lord's body in the Blessed Sacrament. The truth of our Redeemer's Eucharistic presence is inseparable from a still deeper truth that the Mass is, above all else, a sacrifice offered to God. We bring before God, as our offering, none other than Christ himself, pleading before God the infinite power of our Savior's blood of the new covenant, poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. The Mass and the Cross are one and the same sacrifice. The only difference is the manner of offering. On the Cross, Christ was offered in a bloody way by actual death. In the Mass, he is offered to the Father in an unbloody and sacramental way. The Mass is the sacrifice of the cross, made present in an unbloody and sacramental way through the ministry of priests, who are Christ's living instruments. Today we act upon that faith by an act of special adoration of our Redeemer's body, blood, soul, and divinity. St. Paul once wrote to the Corinthians that the kingdom of God does not consist in talk, but in power, that is, in the life-giving and life-changing presence of Jesus Christ among us and within us and in the glory of heaven, where he reigns over us at the Father's right hand as the King of kings and the Lord of Lords.